The MX Keys Mini from Logitech is a wireless membrane keyboard that's very similar in feel to keyboards made by Apple, but packed with a ton of cool features. I think for what you get, it's reasonably priced at 99 US dollars, but why would you choose this keyboard over the many other keyboards you can get out there? I'm gonna start to answer that question by first talking about one of my favorite features of this keyboard over the past six months, which has been its ability to easily switch between different devices. The MX Keys Mini allows you to pair up to three devices using the first three buttons in the function row with Logitech's Easy Switch feature. You can pair each device via Bluetooth to the keyboard, and this feature has worked flawless for me for the past six months. It's especially great if you have a Mac and a Windows gaming PC, and I love that I don't necessarily have to use the Logibolt USB receiver that takes up a precious USB port on my computer just for a stable connection. For the entire review period, I just used the standard Bluetooth connection with my keyboard between my Mac and my PC, and that connection has been flawless. The next thing I've liked about the MX Keys Mini is the build quality and typing experience. The keyboard feels sturdy and more premium than I originally expected with its aluminum design, just like the Magic Keyboard. Plus, I like Logitech used post-consumer recycled plastic for the plastic parts of the keys and has eco-friendly packaging with no plastic. Also, I love the different colors the keyboard comes in, especially the graphite color I chose, which matches my Magic Trackpad and MX Lift mouse which will have a review out on soon, so make sure you subscribe to the channel to see that review and other long-term reviews like this one. The MX Keys Mini is a membrane keyboard, so your key travel is less than you'll find on a mechanical keyboard, and in general, I know I'm probably gonna get some hate for this, but I actually prefer membrane keyboards. I've tried out mechanical keyboards before, but I've just never gotten used to the typing experience enough on a mechanical keyboard to convince me that they're better for ergonomics. But if mechanical keyboards are your thing, Logitech also makes a version of this keyboard in the mechanical style, and I'll leave purchase links here in this video and in the description below if you'd like to learn more about that keyboard. And let me know, what's your favorite type of keyboard? Are you like me and you're cool with the membrane keyboards, or are you a die-hard mechanical keyboard fan? Let me know down in the comments. Back to the design of the MX Keys Mini, Logitech included a light proximity sensor to detect when your hand is over the keyboard. So it turns off the backlight when the keyboard isn't in use, which is pretty cool. But you don't get some of the cooler animations like you do on the mechanical keyboard version. Also, the backlight can drain your battery faster. The keyboard is rated for 10 day battery life on a full charge or up to five months of battery with the backlight turned off. Because of that, I've kept kept my backlight turned off and the battery life has been great. I only had to charge the keyboard once in the past six months via the USB-C port on the back. Now the way you set up and control the MX Keys Mini keyboard on both Mac and Windows is by downloading the Logi Options Plus app. Typically I don't love installing third-party app software just to make a device work because I'm concerned about it running in the background and taking up resources, especially on something like a gaming PC. But overall I have haven't had an issue with the app and found it to be relatively well designed. It makes it easy to get an overview of all of the product features and guides you through how to customize your keyboard to your liking. You can remap the function keys to specific actions or keyboard shortcuts, and you can change the key remapping for each computer that you use the keyboard with, and even for specific apps on your computer, which for me has actually worked very well. I haven't used this feature with my keyboard, and I probably should. But I do use this feature a lot with my MX Lift mouse with Final Cut Pro 10, and the feature has been flawless. The only thing I wish this keyboard had was some type of e-ink or other type of display underneath each function key. That way you could actually see an icon representing what you changed the key to. Sometimes it's a bit hard to remember which key you remapped to what. For example, I've remapped the backlight keys to increase and decrease the brightness of my studio display, and I've remapped the buttons to the left of the play pause button to be skip forward and skip back buttons for music control. That was actually one downside I found with this keyboard. I'm just so accustomed to seeing the skip forward and skip back button on Mac keyboards, it was weird not having them on this one. 
I get why Logitech went with a mute mic and screenshot button, but it would have been cool to do something like enable a double tap or triple tap on the play pause button to skip forward and skip back so I don't have to remap two keys to do that function. So that's everything I've liked about the MX Keys Mini over the past six months. Now let's talk about a few downsides I've encountered with this keyboard. The first of which being software bugs. I did run into a few when I was initially setting up the keyboard with my Mac because the Logi Options Plus program didn't have the correct permissions it needed in order to work. You have to go into settings and make sure you give Logi Options the ability to track keyboard input. On Windows, the setup was fine and I didn't run into any issues. The only other software bug I've run into over the past six months is on my Mac when pressing the mute button on the keyboard. A little overlay appeared on the screen to let me know the mic had been muted but it never went away and I had to restart my computer in order to clear it off the screen. Thankfully, the keyboard UI pop-up notifications can all be turned off in the main settings of the Logi Options Plus app. Now, another downside I found with this keyboard is firmware updates. The Logi Options Plus software is designed to make you think you can update the firmware of this keyboard, but I've been unable to update its firmware via the firmware update tool that Logi Options launches. This happens whether I'm connected through traditional Bluetooth or Logitech's Bolt receiver, which is this tiny USB-A device that creates a more secure and stable connection for current gen Logitech devices. Now the keyboard doesn't come with this receiver unless you buy the business version of the MX keys, but my Logitech MX Lift mouse did. And what's great about the Bolt receiver for me is it's reduced Bluetooth congestion for those times when I want to use a ton of different Bluetooth devices simultaneously with my Mac. Like my Magic Trackpad, Pad, MX Keys Mini, MX Lift Mouse, and wear my AirPods Max and listen to music from my Mac. Without the Bolt receiver, I'll experience constant audio cutouts with my headphones, but when using it, I'll have no cutouts at all. To connect the keyboard to the Bolt receiver through Logi Options Plus is pretty simple. You just select Add Device and then select Logi Bolt Receiver, hold down the pair button on the keyboard, and it'll connect to the Logi Bolt. Now back to the firmware update issue. When I get the message from Logi Options Plus that no device supported is connected for a firmware update, it links to a page on Logitech's website that lists all of the compatible products with the firmware update tool, and sure enough, the MX Keys Mini isn't listed. So it appears there's no way to currently update its firmware, not that you necessarily need to, the keyboard has been fine, but it's just confusing when you see that option listed in its settings to update firmware when you actually can't. And there's no indication that it updated firmware in the background, or even if you're running the latest device firmware available. The last downside I found with this keyboard is specific specifically for those who enjoy Apple keyboards. The MX keys are obviously designed to be similar, but if you want the exact same typing experience you're used to with a Mac, you'll probably wish the key travel was just a hair less and closer to Apple's. The MX keys typing experience is similar to an Apple keyboard, but yes, at the end of the day, I do still favor the typing experience on Apple keyboards a bit more, but I'm not swapping the MX Keys Mini for a different keyboard anytime soon. The MX Keys Mini will continue to be the keyboard I use because of its great easy device switching feature and the ability to customize those keys at the top function row for both Windows and Mac. Plus, we didn't get into flow, but if you use a Mac and Windows computer at the same time, Logitech has a new feature that allows you to drag and drop between computers, very similar to Apple's universal control. I think it's a great keyboard. And if you're considering getting the MX Keys or maybe an Apple Magic Keyboard, I think you'd go for the MX Keys Mini because of the expanded color options, device switching features, ability to customize key shortcuts per app, and because it costs less than Apple's Magic Keyboards. Logitech even has a Mac version of this keyboard that has the classic light aluminum with white keycaps. If you plan on switching between a Mac and Windows machine though, I would just get the regular MX Keys Mini keyboard like I have. Where I'd go with the Apple Magic Keyboard over the MX Keys Mini is if you don't need the device switching feature and you want a slightly better typing experience, though that of course can be subjective, thinner profile, 
and Touch ID, which is a really nice feature to have on a Mac. Unfortunately, Apple doesn't make a mini-sized version of the Magic Keyboard with black keys, only a full-sized keyboard, which is another advantage of the MX Keys Mini. You can color match it with Apple's Black Magic Trackpad and Black Magic Mouse. And that brings me to my last recommendation. I would always go with a mini-sized keyboard if you use a mouse or trackpad. I found that if you use a full-sized keyboard with a mouse or trackpad, it screws with your ergonomics too much and could potentially cause strain or injury when you're repeatedly having to move your hand farther out to reach your mouse or trackpad. If you'd like to check out current pricing or learn more about the MX Keys Mini or any of the other devices I've mentioned in this video, like the other versions of the MX Mini Keyboard or the Mac Studio, Studio Display, or Magic Keyboard, I've left links here in this video and in the description below. Click that thumbs up button if you liked this video and found it helpful and subscribe to the channel to see more long-term reviews on tech products like this one. And if you're looking for what to watch next, check out some of our other long-term reviews on computers and accessories by clicking the playlist to the right. For six months later, I'm Josh Tedder. Thanks for watching.